Our students, welcome to the drawing table. And before I begin, um, I want to let you know that this video did not start out to become what it is going to become. It was going to be a quick lesson, but as I started looking through reference stuff, I said this would be a good lesson if I showed this stuff. So it's not about me showing off. It's about you seeing the journey that I took to learn my style because this video is about developing your own style and at the end of it i'm still going to show you just some quick ways quick very 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 easy ways to show you how to draw the anatomy because that's what it's about it's about drawing how to draw to make it the easiest way possible so let's get started and i'm going to flash through these pictures really quick so i can kill as much time as i can all right, so in 2000, in the year 2000, I put out my first comic book, Trials of the Samurai Clown. Now, I'm going to say I had no idea what I was doing. I had a little knowledge about um, doing comics, but I did not, I was not professional enough to know what to do. I just didn't have the knowledge to really know. So, for example, I had my logo was pretty much bigger than the title. You have to have your big title. Uh, I knew a little bit about Photoshop. I just was introduced by, to Photoshop by my friend, but I didn't have enough knowledge to color the whole inside. So the interior was black and white. And I used um, grayscale. I, did a, I tried to do as much grayscale as possible to make up for the color. Okay, so this it was my style early on. It's changed from the beginning, but this is what it looked like early on with my first book. Now, before I put out a book, I used to have the style of Jim Lee. When Jim Lee first came out, I was like, oh, he's close to, to, to doing my style. And I know you look at this and like, that looks nothing like Jim Lee. But as I was looking for things, I started pulling it out. And these, this is how I was drawing in the beginning. My style has changed a lot. I said, I want to go through these real quick. But I did not know enough about the anatomy to be able to flip it and turn it and do stuff like that. So I didn't want to be like Jim Lee. I didn't want people to say, oh, you draw just like Jim Lee. I wanted people to say, oh, that's Brian Proctor's drawing. So before I put out my comic book, I had a character. I created this character, which I called the flamethrower. Okay, as I said, I'm going to see, I'm just going to put it this way. Uh, now this guy, he can't, he couldn't create fire, but he could control it. So that's just the premise of it. So the, the story was he, he, these guys, the bad guys busted in, he busted into the, the meeting, you know, the guys hit the floor and this is the, 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 the chief. He's like, oh, get this guy. So they pull out their guns and then he makes his appearance, you know, through the hole in the door that he blew in. So and now I didn't know anything about inking. I tried ink and I actually took this one to a convention. And the guy was kind of interested because I, maybe he liked my flow, but this is way, 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 way back in the day. And he said, so what are you trying to do? Are you trying to do a penciler or are you trying to ink? I said, I'm trying to do a penciler. And he said, oh, okay, well, that's a shame because you just covered up all your pencils with your ink. And that depressed me so bad, I stopped drawing. So this is the next page. He came through the wall or he, he jumped through the hole in the wall and he threw his little capsules. These capsules have like a liquid in it. And when they, um, when they hit, uh, and the liquid is to air. I can't think of the word. When it's exposed to air, it catches on fire, but it doesn't like blow up. It just catches on fire. So from that, he can control that. So these guys pull out the guns and, you know, he uses power to flame the thing up and he turned it into like uh, the fireworms. And when they hit the guy and I colored it because I got I tried I was trying to to work with marker years later down the road. So, and then, you know, he slid across the table and kicked this and hit that guy and knocked out. But this guy, he was kind of like waking up and then he pulled his gun up and he, he turned around to see and he shot him and um, he didn't kill him. Okay, so that was kind of the, my very first, one of the first, I'm going to say my very, very first. My very first was like a Batman and I had no idea and I didn't even know about comic book paper. So later on, as I developed my, my skills... Let's do, grab these. This is what the flamethrower turned into. All right, so here you have this. Now let's compare this to this. I'll turn this up a little bit. Let's compare this style to this style. So 
the only way that you're going to get better is to draw and draw and draw and draw some more. So I decided to ink this after a while because it just sat there for years and years. So I said, let me go ahead and try to practice ink because I still, I didn't know what inking was. There was nobody saying, oh, this is how you ink. So same thing, same story. He busts through the door. And this is when I started to develop detail because of the whole Jim Lee thing. You know, I was a detailed person, but when Jim came and he showed his detail, I said, let me start putting my detail into it. So we have that page. Then we have this page. This is where he jumped through the wall. Let me show you this. Let me pull, go back and get this. That is a difference between this jumping through the wall and this jumping through the wall. Basically, I did the same story, but I had, you know, better skills and I understood more about the anatomy and the, the positioning and action. So it's going to take a minute before you get that, but to draw, draw, and draw. So he jumped through the wall, he threw the fire, he threw his, threw his capsules, which he keeps on his side, and I'm going to eventually bring this guy to life, give him his own book. And the capsules hit this lot of, this is, this has been laminated because it was like, I was so proud that I could do that. I laminated it so it would last forever. So I can't see what my vantage point. I can't see because it's a glare. So um, I'm going to put my head up. So he was like, who, look out, he's throwing a bomb. And then he hit the table and then the, the liquid came out and these guys lifted their head up and it's like, what? I thought it was a bomb. So he's like, kill this fool. You know, and he jumped up and he started about to shoot, but he didn't see the, the liquid start to bubble up. And then it came up, he turned it into like these dragons and it hit one guy and then it chased the other guy and it smashed them both into like the table where they were having a party at the cake and so forth. Detail, detail makes it. So then he jumped across the room, kicks these two guys and this is the bad guy or the, the ball under the table. So he just snatches the table up and like, come on, come here. You know, and then he's like, you know, your reign of terror is over or whatever. I don't remember. I don't think it was any really speech, but the way I write is like, I, I see it and then I write it and kind of vice versa. You know, I'll know what he's saying and then I'll draw the picture to it and I'll draw the picture and I'll know what he's saying. Kind of vice versa. So he punched the guy in the face. Detail broke the glasses. See the glass there. So the guy back here, he, you know, he's waking up, you know, and still stunned and he uh, was aiming his gun. It was shaky, still shaky. He turned around, he's like, what? And it's like, a blam, you know, this is kind of some of that Marvel's, not Marvel, um, image kind of stuff. So then he's like, yeah, that's what you get for coming here messing up my party. So then the guy threw his hand up and he had one of his capsules and he broke the capsule, which is liquid kitchen on fire. And he used that and he smashed the guy into the wall and he calling his helicopter because the helicopter dropped him off at the very first panel. The helicopter was flying around the building in the very first panel. So, yeah, I just showed that. Yeah, I showed that picture already. So one of the ways I developed my style was drawing. I and I said this before. I don't know if you ever heard me, but I used to draw for free. I would, I was out there and I would draw your comic book for free. But the thing was, people. These were young guys. I guess these people that didn't really know about comics and what it took and how much money it took and so forth. This is why I drew for free because I wanted you to be able to reach your dream as well. Because you know how much a comic book page costs. Yeah, go look up our. Um, pencilers and see how much one page costs to draw. So I wanted to help people as much as I can. So I was drawing for free and there was a, a, a two sides to that. The second side was if I'm drawing for free for you, then I'm not really worried about it being so, so, so perfect. I'm just drawing. And by me drawing and knowing that, you know, I'm creating something, it was it helped me develop my style and it helped me to flow as well and helped me to, 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 what am I saying? To develop my story boarding, breaking stuff down, you know, because a lot of these guys just had like, they didn't have the professional scripts because these were new people that were trying to get their stuff out. So it was, it just, it just, help me to develop my style. And that's the only way, again, you're gonna learn to develop your style is just draw, draw, and draw. And this guy had a story, it was like this Mad Max kind of, you know, desolate um, place story. And I thought it was pretty cool. And you know, it was a lot of cars and stuff in it. And I'm like, okay, so how do you draw cars moving fast when they're not even moving? So that was a challenge for me to do. So as I said, you know, it's story breakdown, panel design, whole nine yards. You know, I really enjoyed doing that, even though 
the guy never finished. I, it's like I get halfway through these things, and then these people disappear. It's like they, they change their mind. They realize how long it takes to do comics, and they disappear. But, again, I was doing this to develop my style. This other guy, it was another one. And as I say, I'm not trying to show off. I'm just showing you how my style changes. Uh, I think the Batman, which I had, should have came first, but it's in there. I was, it's in the back. It should have came before all this. But I'll show you. So this was another story this guy had, and it was like how the devil, um, you ever see the devil, he has a pitchfork. And this is, you know, one of the, this is, is a really good story that this guy had about, you know, that I don't know where it was going to go because, again, he disappeared on me. So, and I give this to some young guy to ink. I'm not going to show you the other pages, but he screwed up royally and he's and he's, he sent me the page back he's like oh i can't finish i can't do it i'm like thank god because you killed my pencils this one wasn't bad because he started it but yeah and i put so much time into doing this stuff that he couldn't he couldn't ink what i drew so yeah this is this is just more learning a lesson uh somebody wanted to do a and this is a, this was a long, long time ago. Somebody wanted to do a story about David and Goliath. So style change again. So I did that and inking again. I didn't know about inking. After I finished this stuff and people don't, they didn't follow through. I said, okay, well, let me practice my inking or practice my, my whatever on it. So this is, this is, but again, as I say, the whole thing is, is me learning to develop. What am I trying to say? Not just the skills of doing it, but layouts, the whole thing to do comics because I love drawing stories. I love telling stories and, you know, learning the anatomy, turning the anatomy upside down, right side up, inside out, the whole nine yards. This was part of me just doing this for free. So you could say, oh, man, you wasted years of doing that stuff. Not really because I am where I am today because, number one, I bless people. I try to bless people. And number two, it helped me develop my skills. So this was a story about, and if any of you people out there see that this is your story, yeah, you messed up because you should have just continued, but, you know, hey, so it was years ago. Um, I don't remember what this story was about. I just know that they were in a cemetery, and the, the old, um, the bodies came to life, and these guys had to fight these dead bodies, and there was a creature in there, too, so... And some of these things like angles and stuff like that, that was a challenge for me back then. Some, sometimes it's still a challenge now, but it was a challenge that I welcome. And uh, next one, next one, as I said, it didn't start out to be this long. This, this video did not start out to be this long, but it kind of got there because I wanted to show you guys this stuff. This was Kuhn. This guy, these guys, or this guy who did that, these guys, I actually made a video. It was like a, to me, it was like Three Stooges, the Kung Fu Three Stooges. It was a really good video, and they had money. They had money, and they wanted me to draw their their uh, comic book, but they had a team of people, and somebody dogged them, and they sent it out. They sent the message, email out to everybody else except them, but they mistakenly sent it to them, you know, dogging them. So they said, you know, if that's how you feel, we're going to stop the whole project. So they contacted me and like, we canceled the project. But this is when I was doing this one. This is where I ended up finding my flow. This is where my style started to come out because I was flowing through this. I didn't get too much detail. And I don't, I don't detail my panels first. I lay them out and I do, you know, as much uh, detail as I can to understand the story. And then I go from there. And these are not, these are not really spaced out. Um, properly, well, these are, the panels are not numbered properly. And I think this was a, this was a, and yeah, this was a, this was a pin, um, you know, a splash page. But the characters were the guys, the the five guys that were made up. Coon, I think Coon means something. I don't remember what it meant. But as I say, I I found my flow. I was flowing this one, and my style was really, really, really coming out in this one. And of course it was a comedy thing too. So I enjoyed, you know, trying to figure out why well, I keep saying, you know, trying to figure out the comedy portion and the seriousness of, you know, the guys, because yeah, 
but I started to find my flow. And this is where, this is where Brian came to life. One, two, three, four, five, four, five, yeah, five characters. So if you're the coon, coon guys, I started your comic. Never finished it because you canceled the project. If you just happen to see them guys, if you know somebody that knows them, let them see the video. Tell them, hey, look, this guy had your artwork. He showed it off, which would have been your artwork. So this was something I did for myself. I was going to send this in. This is, this is again, this is not in order. This is paid for. I was going to send this in to Marvel because I wanted a job with them. But then I realized later, I don't want, I don't like deadlines, a, a thing called deadlines. And I wasn't really comfortable because knowing, okay, this would have been a, a paid job, a serious job. I had to do perfection and everything was, was tightening up. Or I'd have to be tight. I would have to, couldn't miss a deadline. So I never really sent it in. People are like, you should have sent it in. It was good. It was good. But to me, it was like, you know, okay, so that's page one. And the basic story is these guys are running out of the bar, sports bar. And you go inside. We go inside the sports bar and got all the villains are sitting around, you know, drinking and having a good time. And then... What is this guy? Not, uh, not Dr. Ogden, but what is that guy? Mole Man. Mole Man is stressing out because all these other villains have powers and he kept getting his butt kicked by everybody. And, you know, he's like, you know, I'm sick of this. I'm tired of this. And everybody's like, what, what, what's wrong with him? And he's like, you know, I, can't, I keep getting beat by the Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, Daredevil, you know, and he's just like, I'm tired of it. Like, you know, who am I? Blah, blah, blah. And these people walked into the bar and he's like, who are these people? You get out. So they ran out, you know, and then, you know, he's sitting there frustrated and then, um, Bullseye's like, I won, you know, because he's like, you're not even listening to me. You know, you don't play pool against Bullseye. And then, you know, he's like, nobody cares, you know, and then he put his head down. And he looked up and he's like, we care. And then the heroes are there to kind of like shut it down. Just a quick story. But, um, yeah, I never sent it in because I say to myself, you doubt yourself. As artists, you will always doubt yourself. Is my art good enough? Should I show it? Can I make money off of it? If somebody says, hey, how much do you charge? Per page, you'd be like, well, I don't think I'm that good, so I'm going to charge you way under what you should be charging, you know, well, $20 a page or something crazy like this. So a couple more to go. Somebody wanted a Western. I remember a guy, he wanted to do a Western, another challenging thing. So, you know, you can't do a Western with electricity and, and, and cell phones. So I had to go back and kind of research stuff the way it was looked, the way it looked, the way it was made. And this is, again, it's not, or this is page 14. I can't believe I got to 14 pages in this thing. I, th I think somebody, I did something and the guy was like, oh, that's not the type of gun they used in, you know, in the, in that, you know, that, that era. I'm like, are you serious? So yeah, this is, it was, it was challenging. And then I started inking this one too, because Again, I have the pages, so obviously the guy never, never, you know, went through with it all. So, and I think the girl was like a demon or something. It was his wife, this this guy's wife. She, I don't know if she's a prostitute or something, but she killed the kid, his their son, and he had to go find her. I, I think that's what the story was, but yeah, it was it was different. It was a challenge. It was a challenge. Okay, so this is the Batman story that I did years, years, years ago. All right, so I am re-editing this little Batman portion because when I first did it, there were a couple pages missing, and the story didn't really flow um, like it should have, but I found the two pages, and I decided to put it back in there again because it just makes more sense with the other pages. Not that this is about telling the story. It's about me developing my style so okay basic story is batman a girl a little girl was kidnapped batman tracked her down and then he saw her little bow at the sewer and i had to really look at this to remember myself because it's been so long since i did it plus the scraping marks of the, the sewer drain sewer thing being dragged back and put back on so he knew that they were down there so he jumped down into the sewer, nice little splash. I don't know which one should have been bigger, but I wanted that one. I want to get a little more splash, but yeah. And as I said, I started inking because I didn't really know about inking. And I stated earlier, stay tuned to the end, and i tell you a little bit more about inking, which makes it really, really, really easy. It makes it easier when you decide to ink. So, okay, splash down, and he's walking the sewer. He's got his little bat flashlight. That would have been... Oh, they did some kind of circle. I couldn't figure out what to do. And then he stops and he smiles because he knows 
it's like two ways to go and he knows that um the people would have been like okay he'll get lost he doesn't know which way to go but batman decides he's going to go through the middle that's because you know he's smarter than than these guys he kind of looks up nice angle cross through the, the the little pipe opening whatever and then he sees the guys down here with the money and they're talking about whatever so batman's up there listening but the girl is also here in this um container or whatever and the water's dripping down slowly you know so yeah he only has so much time before she drowns so he's there and he's listening to the people talk and he kind of kind of figures them out he knows this guy he's like wants to be like the bruce lee type this guy's a strong man so he says he's probably a boxer and this guy's like a gunman because i think you might have seen his gun under his his coat or something i don't know so he kind of figures out what he has to do to knock these people out. So he kicks open the thing. He swings down and kicks the guy with the gun because he knows he would have been the most dangerous because all he had to do was shoot was slides him back into the wall and knocks him out. <clears throat> so the other guy who was running toward the that, that's what it is, he lands between him and her. So this is the fight scene, which was not in the original take. He fights the guy because, you know, he's the martial artist, but, you know, you have a fight. It's uh, the water's getting higher, more fight, water's getting higher. And then the guy comes up behind him and he kind of like hits him from the back. And he's thinking he was a boxer. That's the thing. He misjudged and the water's getting higher. So he's figured, you know, boxer's got weak chin, so we'll knock him out. And the water's getting higher. So then he went to the girl and he's like, don't worry, I'll have you out in a second. He pulls, got his batarang out. She's kind of like looking around behind him. The guy grabs Batman from behind. And he misjudged the guy. He wasn't a boxer. He was a wrestler. And he throws Batman down, hits him on the head, you know, hits his head. And he kind of like kind of wakes up a little bit just in time for this guy to almost smash him in the face. He grabs a foot, twists the foot. Guy falls down. He knows he doesn't have much time. So he gets up, grabs the batarang, and he's about to smash the glass as the, before the girl drowns. But the guy pulls his cape, pulls him away as he's coming down with the opening blow and then he's like pissed now and he's like whatever says whatever there's no dialogue for that so um the girl is almost down so batman knows he doesn't have much time so he has to hit harder to knock the guy out and he finally was able to knock the guy down grabs the batarang and he's about to break open the glass but then he realizes it's too late for the girl so I wanted something, and this is kind of like my story. I wanted something because Batman's always shaving everybody. I wanted something where he where he actually failed, you know, to, to mess up his, his psyche just a little bit more because, you know, Batman is really kind of screwed up. So, yeah, this was just a story. And by doing this, by finally doing my own stories, and I don't think I said this in the video anywhere, um, after a couple of years of doing other people's stories and none of them, going to print i got tired of doing their stuff and i said it's time for me to do my own stuff i thought I, I i said to myself i think i'm good enough so i can start doing my own stuff so then i started writing stories like this just little quick stories not to go to marvel or anything like that just to show myself i can do it you know i can have the detail on it and this was this was long before youtube came around so basically it was for me to see and maybe i would show them at some conventions or something but yeah, it just took that for me to help develop my style. So let's keep going with the video. Those things that I showed you, that was developing my style. It wasn't so much I want to show off, it was developing my style. So I showed you book one, and this is book five. I'm Actually, I'm on book seven. I had it, somebody, I think I colored this one, but I had, had somebody else to color the, um, recolor it. And he wanted to try something different. He wanted to try like this kind of like painting color. I was like, oh yeah, go ahead. But from this to kind of this, you can you can see, I can't see in my monitor. There's there's a big change. And I learned how to do photo color, Photoshop a little better, but I still hand it out to people to do Photoshop. But style, my style has changed. It's not so because I know I don't have to um uh, what is it called with the gray, 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 gray scale or, 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 you know, do gray scale. I leave it up to color. So I leave my stuff more open. Now I don't do a lot of inking, shadow inkings because 
I don't. <laughs> I'm not skilled at doing that, should I say, as you know, professionals, because I never, never, I never understood the, the, the principle of doing shadows on inkings. And another reason was um, my legend, John Byrne. John Byrne was one of the first people I got when caused me to get into comics. And John Byrne, his body, when I draw, let me grab a, if I can find one real quick. I always try to draw, put as much muscle into my characters, not because I want to draw muscles, it's just that I want to know how the body goes when twists and turns, or how the muscles form when twists and turns. Why can I not find that? I don't know. Let me find it, just to show you. Alright, as I was saying, this is John Byrne. He, he was one of the ones that I enjoyed looking at. His style was really good. He didn't really connect all the muscles. He didn't. Ha you don't have to connect the muscles. You don't have to draw every muscle connecting because it's unnecessary. John would do the shapes. He would have the, the shapes would be more rounder, more muscular. So he did not have to connect everything because they looked muscular. Then they were muscular. Whereas my style developed to be more of... I want to put every muscle together so that I know what it looks like when it moves or when it twists or when it, when you bend. That's just me. I just wanted to know the muscle. So this is, this is more what I have developed into. And these are going to be, you know, later on lessons for, um, my YouTube drawing lessons. And where did the other one go? But that's okay, time-wise. So this is one of the first people that I, I got into. And then it turned into Jim Lee. But let me show you a couple other books that um, have influenced their style, have influenced me. And again, you don't want to... You don't want to... You don't want to... Try to emulate somebody. You want to be your own person. Of course, we got Jim Lee again, and I want to show you a Jim Lee uh, thing. Jim Lee, is, to me, is, is a master of detail. Jim puts as much detail as he can into his into into his work, and he influenced me because I said I, I had a style that was very similar to him. Uh, Madeira, Madeira, Madeira uh, I'll mess this man's name up. I liked his style because he had more of a, a um, manga kind of influence on his drawing, which was was good. And he also didn't, you know, he made the characters big, but he didn't over-muscularize them, but he did at the same time. And this is back in the day when they were putting all kind of advertisements in books to help the books sell. But he had a really good style. I don't think he had the main, he didn't show the main character. But I liked his flow. I liked the um, the layouts of it. He always used like the kind of like the uh, the anime kind of style for his, his special effects. Somebody else that... But you don't want to be like this. This is Venice. Um, Ed Venice or Benice. I think he is Spanish, I think. Write me in the comments if I'm wrong. He was another one. He had kind of a that, that, that anime style, but he always had a flow. I love his work. It, you don't have you don't have um, a lot of muscle in it, but he also drew the guys big where you would know. They did, they did have muscles, and in some cases, he did do the muscles as well. My computer just said something about smart view. This guy was a master, Ch Travis Cherist. Tr Tr He's French. And when I saw his stuff, it just kind of like blew me away. Hopefully, this stuff is, my camera is still filming because it said something about my, something, I don't know. So, we'll go, and I'd hate to redo this. This guy was... To me, let's just show you this stuff. This guy, it was he used more of a realistic style, and I'm sure he must have inked his own stuff. But his stuff, I, you know, I could not get enough of his stuff. I don't know if he still draws for Marvel or DC or whatever, but this guy's stuff was freaking incredible. And body-wise, I mean, he used to do realistically. And see, this was Wolverine... Um, and Wildcats kind of crossover, and Wolverine is really short. He is, he is just, he's short. But for some reason, they decided to make him six feet tall. I mean, this, this is Wolverine. He's, he's a short guy, really short guy. 
But this guy's style, I mean, just the way he does it, you don't, he doesn't even need colors. He's just that good. And this book was, this book was back in the day. And he just uses a lot of blacks. And, um, yeah, just devastatingly good. So, all right, 29 minutes. That's not too bad, 29 minutes. But these are the people, these are the books, these are the artists that help influence my style. And just by drawing, 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 and maybe I'll use this for a, uh, I'll just get over and use this as a thumbnail. That's the hardest part about doing these videos, is doing a thumbnail. Or maybe I'll throw these guys up here and then do that as a thumbnail as well. But these are going to be lessons, so I'm not going to use that. So anyway, that's why I used to draw for free. It's not the fact that that I'm rich or something like that. It's just I over I over um I wanted my I wanted to get my style out. I wanted to be you know because I didn't really care if it was not if I was crooked or whatever. I tried to do my best, but I wasn't that professional back in the day. But I used them to make myself better. So this is some stuff that I'm working on because you can, you, you might want to do cartoony stuff. You know, what I have learned, I've translated into doing other things. I've done children's books. I've done, um, novel covers. I've done a lot from what I have learned. I have taught myself to do. Uh, this is not just because of here, this was part of the original lesson that I was just going to show these couple things and then keep moving on. I'm going to color this, but I just, you know, just wanted to do something different. And then, of course, if you haven't lived in an elevator, this is the Animal Corp, which I am going to put out soon. And the style, like I said, these were the original, this is the original stuff I was going to show you guys. This is the Clown Book 7. I know 2000, you started in 2000, this is book seven, between doing YouTube and so forth and so on, there's a lot. This is how my style has developed now. This is when I draw, this is this is what comes out. I've done, I've, the thumbnails are done, so now I'm putting them on the panels, getting them into the panels right, getting the shapes, uh, opening up the body so that, you know, one shoulder won't be off or one arm won't be off. And this is, and I've got, you know, more on the back too, but I'm not going to show, just show the front. Um, yeah, this is, this is how the style is. And then after this, and then I'll go put clothes on them and details and so forth and so on. And then, you know, have your, have my, um, get my book. All right. So now let's get into the lesson and the lesson should take five to 10 minutes of how simple it is to draw the body and you can, you can, um, develop your style from there. So there are several ways to draw, and this is, I kind of went through all of them as I was, as I was learning, and um, something I said in the last video, start getting away from your stagnant, straight up and down positions, like, oh, I got to get the arms bigger, I got to get the shoulders bigger. The only way that you're going to become a better drawer is start to make them run, make them jump, start, start um, thinking about scenes, think about like two people, um, Western or about to draw on, on one each other, not draw with the guns, you know, have a have a shootout or something like that. Just maybe two or three panels or somebody walking into a room, somebody sitting down, you know, sitting down in a chair and somebody coming out the door or whatever. Just make some little scene up in your head and then try to draw it. Sorry, it's hiccuping. So simple, simple ways to draw. Let's start out with this. Hopefully I can fit. It's only like five. That is the letter A. You know, we all can write. Let me lift this up a little bit more. We can all draw or write, write, or, or draw the letter. Which basically, it's just basically you're drawing letters like that. Letter A. Everybody can do that. Add this. Put a head on there. These are for the people that really say, I can draw. I really can draw. You will draw after this. Right there is your neck. Triangles for shoulders. And you can put our hands, arms, arms, and arms and hands, and then feet. Oh, you got Mario. You know, so that's a simple. We're doing that now. You have you have a body now. I can I can slim this in, bring this slim it in, and, and curve it out a little bit. Or I can bring this to a point. And then I can dress it. A lot of times if you're starting out, you want to dress your character, unless you have some kind of skin tight, 
you know, um, Black Panther suit on him or something like that. But if I dress this guy or kid or whatever, then who's going to know that, you know, this started out as the letter A? Very simple. Uh, another way to do it is you're kind of almost making a triangle. You cut it off like that, and then you're going to do a square. It's like that, or turn it into the house. You have your body already. Here's the head again. I should have brought that down a little bit. Let's, let's bring that sh shoulder down a little bit because I want to get that head. Shoulders down. Try not to make it too wide. And there's my head again. Here's my neck. And here's my little triangle for the shoulders. The triangle for the shoulders. Chop it off like this. Think about somebody having suspenders. And that's going to be your delts. And then your arms come down. And here's your legs again. Simple shapes, simple shapes. I always say, make your shapes. Do your shapes before, before you start to draw. Do your shapes. A lot of times people have trouble with um, proportions. Just remember, at your waist, your elbow is just a little bit over the waist. So if you go a little bit over the waist, this is where this part is going to stop. And your, your wrist is going to stop at the bottom of the crotch if your arm is straight down. So you remember your arm rotates. But this and this needs to be the same length, and then your your uh, hand goes right under that center line. Uh, let's do the other one real quick since we did it. And sometimes I used to draw, because I draw this way. You notice, if you ever look at my video, my papers are never this way. I cannot draw straight. I cannot write straight. I have to turn my page this way. I don't know why. It's just I was born that way. And because of that, a lot of times my lines will be crooked and I'll notice that later, you know, in a video. That's why whenever I draw something, I don't try to ink it that same day. Or I don't try to detail it that same day. I like to let it sit and I look at it. And the next day when I look at it or a few hours later, I can say, oh, that's that's crooked. That's not right. So another thing you can do is if you have a mirror, look at it in the mirror. You can see it. Turn it upside down. You can see it. Uh, or look at it through the back if you have like a light or something you know, like you can't see this you know you can look at it through the back but basically the easiest way to do is turn it upside down or look at it in a mirror and you should have a mirror if you have a drawing table you should have a mirror somewhere especially if you're doing anatomy because it's good for facial expressions all right another way i do is or you can do is just this regular rectangle and a lot of times when i draw comics i'll do the, this rectangle and then, because you can get a lot of um, motion from that rectangle, but I'll still go and I'll put my final circles into it. But this is for you guys who are beginners and say you cannot. So rectangle, you always have your center line. You want to always have your center line. That way you know your person is going. Have your neck. Have a V right here. And then a triangle for your shoulders. That gives you more of that realism. And then you can put your legs here. I'll bring it up, bring my legs up into the into the crotch area where, where it needs to be. And then chop that off a little bit again. And then because your chest is shaped like this and your delts actually go to, through your chest and the, these are kind of like connected with your <sighs> traps. So your delts are around like this, and your traps go up into there. So maybe this will be the maybe this will be the um, thumbnail. I don't know. Hey, that looks that's looking kind of weird, Brian. Let's put some draws on them. Draws, yeah, drawers. So <laughs> we have that, and we have this, and of course again the wrist stops at the crotch, and there's the hand. Uh, delts, bicep, tricep. And the hand and you can again bring this in and out and it's easy from just drawing that um, rectangle and same with your legs if you're young and you one arm is longer than the other always draw you know if you're drawing the stagnant straight up and down position but just try to remember that you know one is as long as the other and um, the clothespin guy, which is close to the A, which I used to do, just the just clothespin, just the clothespin guy, which is easier than doing the A. 
People are like, what is a clothespin? A clothespin is something you used to hang your clothes out on the line to dry back in the day. Back in the day, yeah. So that's basically the same thing as A, but I use that because it flows a lot of times. Just like the, the um, rectangle will flow. And I'm going to kind of make it flow a little bit. So if I'm, if I'm doing a position, I'll use that rectangle and have it flow. Or if I want to continue with that, the clothespin, I will do something like this. And then I put my head here. Always remember your center line. Then I will do the arms however I want to put the arms. And then I will do what is going to be the last, the last position, which is what I have taught myself to do by using what I call the beetle method. So I'll do this for the um, torso, center line, add my little rectangle for my waist, upside down house. And I break it down into several pieces because everything moves. Like this is just like one piece. That's what two pieces, this is one piece. And this is just got a flow to it, but I'll break it down into this when I finish. So I have this, my center line, my cross, my head, my neck, the V, which is going to be right there at that point, my shoulders, which I can make bigger, my delts, let's finish this, my leg, part of my leg, knee, other leg, and out of everything that I have done, this is what I find works for me best to draw something like this, or to draw a character like this. Or draw anatomy like this, should I say. It's just easy for me to do it. And then I say, once I do this, I'll turn it upside down. Like, I can already see that the, the head is, you know, on a little crooked. So, I'll turn it upside down. I'll walk away. I'll go get something to eat or just make a sandwich or... You know, go to the bathroom or whatever, and then I'll come back and i say, okay, you have to adjust this, bring this over, bring this down. And that works for me the best. This is the way that I taught myself. And like I say, if I'm drawing comics the same way I did this, I will tend to draw the, do that rectangle first and then come back with, just like you see these guys, these guys are basically just rectangles here, straight lines. And then I will add my circle here, to show you know where that stomach is going to go and then i'll put the abs in but these guys are going to wear clothes all these guys have clothes on so there's no need for me to actually try to put muscles on these guys these guys are not muscular and even with this guy i draw the muscle first and then put the clothes on so as a lot of times i don't have to do the muscle I, 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 there was no need to do the muscle but if i do shading shadow i'll know you know where the upper part is and where the lower part is and where the light hits and shadow hits so that's kind of the only reason why i do a little uh, uh anatomy on it let's see let's see let's see if i can get this guy uh like this guy down here you know i'll, I'll do a little bit of the anatomy and then the rest is going to be closed and then you know i erase a lot of it or just put the the the, the pull lines and your, your wrinkles are not really called wrinkles i think it's just pull lines your static lines it's not static lines. Anyway, yeah, so back to this. 42 minutes. This is going to be about 50 minutes, I guess. I'll do this. Then I will do my, and since he's kind of like up at an angle, I'll do this, the waist, and then my upside down house. And then my legs will come from there. Then remembering that this is a ball almost. It's going to be round. And you don't want to make this have this too low. You don't want to make this too long. And then go from there, cut that down. Here's my delt here. My arm is going to come out of here. From there. And then the leg. A lot of times I make my legs long, especially with the women. I have to watch out for that. Cap is going to be there. And then you have your position, however your position is, but just it's just easier for me 
especially if I'm drawing small. If I'm drawing a pinup or something, this is what I'll do first. I'll do this first, then I will put all the extra muscles and details into that. If I'm drawing something small like a panel, then I will have my people like this because it gives me more flow. But by just drawing that, that, if I go up with it, gives me more flow. And then I'll know where my center line is. And then, of course, my head is going to be tilted. However, you know, cut this off for the arms. And this is why my videos get long because I, I explain over and over again. And I think that's the best way you should do that. Is just continue to explain to beat them down. And then you have, you know, your, your, your flow. Your characters are not so stagnant, just standing there. And that's the way it should go. And there was one last thing that I was going to say or show. And I completely forgot. So let me cut this or let me stop this and look. And if I can't remember, then I'll just end it right here. All right, so now I remembered after like an hour later editing the video, what I was going to say, which was important and it was important. Okay, so in some of the drawings you saw, I started inking, but I didn't really ink a lot. That's because I really didn't understand about inking. And one reason is that I was a Jim Lee fan, you already know that. So I would look at how Jim Lee inks and I never could figure out the cross hatching and the feathering. I had no idea what that stuff was, but I tried it on my own and um, I would always mess up. And I was always scared to mess up my penciling because I put so much time into it. But I saw a video about one of the guys. He was one of the old image guys. Actually, Jim Lee recruited him and he worked under Jim Lee's little team. He was saying when you ink and I'm, I'm going to show you a comparison. This is Madeira, 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 I'm messing his name up. Anyway, this is his, this is his work and this is Jim Lee's work. He said, when you ink, shadows are just black spots or black shapes on your page, which if you look at this, he has very little um, feathering on his Magneto versus Jim who, who's like, he's out there, but that's Jim's style because a lot of young people now or new people try to emulate his style and so did I, his style of inking and so did I. I mean, he doesn't, he inks some of his stuff, but he doesn't ink his stuff in a book, but just the way he sets his lines up for his inker, everybody tries to do that. Whereas you didn't need that. You just use, as he said, just shapes. You just, they're just basic black shapes that you use for inking. And then you can add just a little bit of feathering on some of the ends to um, give it that actual, you know, light is coming in this way or it's going out that way kind of look. So after he said that, I started doing that and I was like, oh, okay. Now I know I don't have to have all of this, this cross hatching and stuff like that. Let's, where's the other magneto picture? Yeah, so I didn't need all of that Jim Lee, you know, good kind of cross hatching stuff. It's just, that looks just as good as that. I mean, you know, it. and in some ways, I like this one better than that one because, yeah. So anyway, that's what I was going to say about inking. For all of you who are going to try, who try this style of inking and it just doesn't work out or you're afraid to do it, just do your simple black shapes and then with just a little feathering on the end if need be. So that's it. That's it. That's it. So, all right. So I want to make this the last thing. I want to give a shout out and a plug to the Action Pose Position 360 book. This is a book I did, and I want to tell you exactly why I did this book. It's because that when we start out drawing, we usually look at something from a comic book or something like that, and then we draw that position, and kind of like that's the only position that we know how to draw, and we draw that same position over and over again, and we really don't know how to turn positions around so I said to myself let's just do this book that actually shows what the anatomy looks like when you turn it around so basically these are some of the poses that are that you see like you see this pose a lot of times in comic books and we always draw that but what does that look like if you turn it around from the back or from the side or from the other side or from the top looking down you know and I wanted to do that with this book this is another position a jumping position along with as putting as much of the muscle in 
as I could put in so that you will know, you know, where the muscle is located when you draw from any position. That's one of the main reasons that I did this book because I wanted people to know how to draw a little easier because you, it's, it's hard to find good reference and stuff. So this book is like packed with a lot of stuff. And this one here, putting them together is to me the most important part. As I always say, you have to draw with shapes. And these are the 25 shapes that it takes to draw the human body, male or female. You just change the proportions a little bit. So by drawing these simple shapes, you'll be able to draw. Because I always say, if you look at something, I don't Garfield, I use Garfield again. And I'll use him again because he's here. If you look at something and see the shape of it versus the detail and stuff, and you start drawing the shape, like the oval ears, the almost triangle, uh, oval face, the almost triangle ears, the oval eyes, the oval nose. So there's the oval, 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 oval. It's easy to draw this stuff when you put it together. So by taking these 25 shapes and you put, in, put them together, because I say drawing is like a puzzle. Once you learn where the pieces go and how they fit, is my camera blurred? It was. And where they fit, it's easy to draw. Is this blurred? Is it really blurred? And then when you put them together, you just kind of connect them and then you have your muscle already. Now, some of this I wrote on, I wrote in this book a lot because it's easy. It's easy. This is a good, this is a good paper it's to erase. Where is that one blue picture? There's a lot of stuff in this book. There's even hands and I'm going to do a 360 handbook when I sit down and I get the time to be able to do that. But there, there's just so many things that I want to do to teach people how to draw to reach their goal. But again, it's time. So time consuming and it's, it's a time thing. You know, and it's also a money thing. This is why I say, if you've learned something, give me a like. That way YouTube will, will, will keep my video up and I can make money to be able to Number one, retire, and number two, do this kind of thing full time. So this is available in on Amazon. Just yeah, just go on Amazon. Uh, Action pose position three sixty. So yes, yeah, this is gonna be it. Let me let me let me do my outro and then finish editing this thing and put this up so you guys can have a little more knowledge under your belt. All right. So that's gonna be it for this video and. Um, yeah, and if, if you learn something, give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, you know, so YouTube will say, oh, okay, this guy's putting out some good content. Let's keep his video up front so that people can see it. So that's going to be it for this one. I'll see you guys next week. Week, I'm going to try to put out a video every Friday or Saturday. And um, yeah, get right back into it. Get back into, you know, teaching you guys again. All right, that's going to be it. Keep drawing. Don't give up. It takes time. It takes time, but just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, and eventually you will be able to reach your goal, whatever that goal is. All right, later.